This is a hard week for fantasy football managers. A lot of low-scoring games and a ton of bye weeks. That's why you're here. We are going to help you go through all the news, all the matchups, our starts of the week, and it's boom, boom time, baby. I'm back. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time, yeah. Will he play tonight? <laughs> I don't know. Welcome into the show, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore is here, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman. I'm Andy Holloway. Is uh, Trevor Lawrence. Is Prince Valiant playing tonight? I don't believe so. All right. That was the first thing Jason said to me as he walked into the studio this morning, or one of the first things. He said, I don't think Trevor Lawrence is going to play tonight. Yeah, they. Uh, I mean, he's pushing to play. Um you know, the, it's it's possible, but teams don't usually activate quarterbacks to their active roster just, you know, for depth. They do it because they need a quarterback playing, and so we'll, we'll see. Uh, it's a short week. He's got the knee issue. Um, it, it's certainly not impossible that he plays tonight, but I, I think fantasy managers should be prepared to uh, not yeah. have Trevor Lawrence. Get, and, uh, some C.J. Beathard action. Uh, would be the, that would be the backup, and... Um, you know what? What would that do to your guys' expectations for Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk? Oh, are they are they just benched? Kicks them right in the crotch. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, Good it, it really kick. does. Look, I wouldn't care so much about it if the matchup was delicious, right? But it's not. But so I do care, and it, and it, it it kicks them right in the crotch. It it does. We're going over a lot of matchups today, so I'd be curious if we find some. Uh, some nasty boys that you might be I'll interested I'll throw one in. out right now. Hit me. Joshua Palmer. Would you rather play him mm. against Kansas City or would you rather play Christian Kirk? With Beathard, you're With saying. Beathard. With Beathard. With um, Beathard against the Saints. I would go I would go Palmer. I would still play Kirk. Okay. All right. That was the beginning. We'll, we'll get into the matchups. That is uh, today's show. Along with starts of the week. I'll be honest. Uh, one of mine is pretty scary. Oh, brother! I am. You got nasty Look, boys. It's we got six teams on by. Yeah, this is the time. Got injuries everywhere. That you are. You're diving into the numbers. You are looking at the process of where where can I find someone to fill in, and who who is the. Who is the cleanest of the nasty boys that I'm willing to put in a starting roster? Because, oh man, I don't know if you guys saw it, but someone tagged me or he tagged us on on Twitter saying, "Uh, should the comm like I'm the commission? What what do we think about this? Because you know we always say you start a full roster, and this was a dynasty league, and this team with the bye weeks and the injuries was literally like." Three players short, three players three. short of a di on a dynasty on a team. dynasty squad, and it's like, what? Ah, I mean, now does the like, dynasty squad have only Houston Texans? I mean, is this the whole roster of Texans on by? That is shocking. No, is I mean, there are so many teams on by, and then just with the injuries, it was it was a wild squad to see. I mean, I'm hit. My dynasty team. Oh, Jason is making a face. Did some waiver action Well, happen? I was going to say it is drop it like it's hot day, so check, uh, your, check your waiver okay. wire. But the, the point being, uh, oh, yeah, Kyle found the tweet, so you guys can look at the team. My dynasty roster, I, uh, I don't have uh, – yeah, I don't Mike's care about not, you. Mike's I don't not care happy. You. Well, I want to finish the point. All right. CeeDee Lamb, Garrett Wilson, Jamar Chase, like the bedrock of my dynasty squad. No, no, the NFL in its infinite wisdom – is letting them all rest this week. Well, did you see that we go from like I think we have no buys next week. Yeah, you, of course. Why? And then yeah, we're back to like because we took care of them. Then we why, go back to six. Why spread them out? Yeah. Why? Why would you do that? Rip the bandaid off. So speaking of, uh, I mean, Jason, what was? Yeah, that? I yeah, was grimacing happened? because our waivers went through, and I really, really, really wanted Joshua Palmer. I upped my bid a little. You still bit. got a Josh. I did. I wanted both Joshes. I wanted Josh Downs and Joshua Palmer, but Andy outbid me. 
Or Joshua Palmer. Speaking to the the, the point, you the, fart face, the bye week point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it is one of those weeks where you're, you're fighting. Like I had a bunch of fab saved the whole year, and then the buys hit and the injuries hit, and you I spent almost all of it just to survive. So um, yeah, it's it's tough. We'll see. Uh, boom boom kicker on the show today as well. Follow us on X at the FF Ballers at Andy Holloway. At Jason FFL, at FF Hitman. And then uh, Mr. Moore, Mr. Wright, we have a discount. It's discount o'clock because the DFS pass. It's that time. We have reached one third of the way through the season, and the DFS pass, the heralded, much acclaimed, potentially award winning. DFS pass uh, now 33% off. That's I've not given it fair. awards. I made up my own award and I gave it to the DFS pass. Oh, fantastic. Best DFS pass. <laughs> got gold uh, yeah no bronze here <laughs> um yeah that's uh that's not fair because we are technically not a third the way through the dfs pass this season no. because the dfs pass goes into the playoffs so when when nfl playoffs are happening you could still play along and uh have some skin in the game and have do you want uh, me to undo insights. it or or just leave the we'll day we'll leave it we'll, we'll, we'll let it ride dfspass.com take advantage of that a chance to get in there uh for Two-thirds of the price. All right, into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. So one, one of the pieces of news that I do not see in our show doc that I'm going to lead with was the comments from uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the son oh, yeah, of the, the daughter of Susan McVeigh. Right. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Sean, you know him as Sean McVay. Yeah. They asked him point blank in a press conference, like, if, is it fair to expect Zach Evans is going to start the game? And he said, I wouldn't say that. He said that all four players are going, they're going to be able to evaluate it this week. And when he says all four, Zach Evans, Royce Freeman, Daryl Henderson, and Miles Gaskin, and he named them all. He said them by name. So right now, you know, we don't know who's going to get the majority of the reps. And in a lot of leagues, all the fab was spent on Zach Evans. None of it was spent on Royce. I saw somebody just added Daryl Henderson named Jason for yes, zero for zero dollars. Uh, familiarity with the system. So, you know, I don't really know how dependable Zach Evans is going to be this week. And you need to be willing to make a pivot if you find out more later in the week. Yeah, I think uh, Zach Evans is exciting. You know, he's the the fast, speedy rookie that you hope you can just hit a home run with. But the fact that, like, in our league, he went for 78 fab while Royce Freeman and Darnell Anderson were, oh, un he's back. <laughs> were unclaimed uh, is a ridiculous gap. It's a mistake. And, I, you know... It makes it very difficult. His comments, I know I know he's a dirty, dirty liar. And so we're going to really be tested this week. Maybe he's trying to make amends and just let everybody know, hey, look, this is what's happening. I want fantasy managers to be aware. Or maybe, you know, if he comes out and it's all Zach Evans, we will know just what a filthy mouth he has. Um, <laughs> or, or because Zach Evans has been the one who's – been on the roster for the entirety of the year. Get that matters it. so not at all. Really? Completely. Yeah, I, I mean, literally, you have that example with Arizona giving Damian Williams a ton of work last week. I mean, four carries in his life for Zach Evans. Pe sometimes players play roles. Darrington Evans. Was he yeah. on the roster forever? Yeah. No, he wasn't. They when, just added him. He wasn't on their practice squad? No, he, they, they added him to the they, – I don't remember if he was on the practice squad the whole year. But I just – look, I, I didn't spend fab on Zach Evans because I was afraid of this. If you want continuity, if if that's – you know, you you want someone that knows the system, the person that knows the system the best is Daryl Henderson, a.k.a. Darnell Anderson. Um, Daryl Henderson has been in this role before. So if he comes out and is the guy, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, and they, they did. They added him to the roster, and all of a sudden he was getting more carries in the first half than, than Freeman. So – doesn't mean that Zach can't do it. He has the most upside as a player. When you draft a, uh, he's a young, fast, talented, highly, um, you know, scouted player. So familiarity does matter. It's a scary situation. Yeah, I, I think the, the addition of Henderson, 
is like the, I think that's the biggest threat. To me, the, the probability still lies that it'll be Zach Evans and Royce Freeman as the as the predominant running backs. Gaskin, the addition, uh, that's whatever. But Henderson, Henderson could go in and be like, yeah, I remember all this stuff. Let's put it. Let, let's set the line. Eight fantasy points. Do you think Zach Evans is above or below eight fantasy points this week? If you had to make the estimation right now, I would, I'm going to take the under. So then, the, the the what sucks is the matchup is good. It's a simple question. Yeah, no, I, it's not. No, it over is, under sorry, eight it is not a simple points. Question. The ending answer one is a one word answer. So that's simple. I will go. I will. I will go under. I'm going to go under as well. Roshan Johnson remains in the concussion protocol. He did not practice on Wednesday. So we're still waiting to hear, is it going to be mm. Roshan, Freeman, Evans, that combination for Bilbo? Foreman. You called him Freeman again. Foreman, yeah. Devontae Smith added to the injury report on Wednesday. The team added Julio Jones. Yeah, this, this was a hamstring issue. Uh, that's what it was listed as. And if you were going to not practice with a hamstring you have a greater than 50% chance of not playing in that week, so you need to be prepared. He was originally going to be my start of the week. The matchup is great for uh, the Eagles, and you expect a ton of points this week in that game. Um, uh, you know, I was really looking forward to a bounce back, and now my teams that acquired Devonta Smith recently are looking to have a different starter prepared. Yeah, makes sense, and uh, you know, maybe Dallas Goddard gets more involved. Jeff Wilson... Return to a full practice. It seems like Jeff Wilson will be next man up behind Raheem Mostert. I would rather start Jeff Wilson than Zach Evans for sure. Wow, in week one yeah. of Wilson being back. I, oh, it's can, week one for both of them. I can see that, yeah. Okay. Uh, Kyler Murray, limited on Wednesday. They said the plan, at least uh, Arizona reporters are saying the plan is to have him back in two weeks. Okay. So not this week, potentially next week, uh, but he has a 21-day window. Aaron Jones returned to limited practice. Should people be trading for Hollywood Brown right now, trying to acquire him? They should be doing that anyways. Right. That's yeah. what I mean. He's, yeah. he's a great start this week. He's Hi been... Mm, mm. Nice. He's just a really good player, and his ceiling is about to... You know, the, he's he's going from a single story to a two-story house soon. I think okay, that... Okay, the ceiling. I get it. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> vaulted. I was gonna say, it's, it's got to be vaulted because the, the, the adding a second story doesn't necessarily mean that yeah, it's your have a vault. No, it's one of the rooms has the, vaulted, the yeah. full vaulted ceiling. No, I like it. Yeah, because no, I'm in. In in like in my I have a two story home and my my second story is actually but the that ceiling is much lower. That's it, an eight foot, but it raises the roof <laughs> from the outside. Right, I'm, I'm raising the roof. <laughs> um, I think that go going after Hollywood Brown though you have to have, have a certain. Play, you have to have a certain roster set up. Like I'd, Hollywood, I agree that he's a good addition right now, but to look long-term, if Kyler's not back for two weeks, Kyler's acclimating to a system he's never played in, I think it, it could still take some time. So this isn't an, an immediate fix to a roster. Devontae Adams. <laughs> there was a big oh, kind of press man. conference answer from Devontae Adams yesterday, and I went back this morning and Which, watched it. Did you? I, yeah, I didn't watch. I, I've only read. No, the you quote. guys both need to listen here yeah. because the the quote that came out of it of a, of a long answer was perfect for Twitter slash X. Uh, it was essentially, "I'm not here for wins and losses. I'm here for greatness." In my, saying so that, my benchmark is not yeah, my wins benchmark and losses. is not wins and losses. It's greatness, and that's going around. And people are like, "What in the world? This is terrible. You're not a good leader. Um, you because his production the last two weeks has not been good." but the team won last week and it's a non-starter. I mean, the whole, the whole thing, if you listen to the answer, I, and I posted it on my, on my account on X, everything he said is fine to me. This is a competitor. He compares it to like Kobe having that mentality of like his main point is the offense isn't doing very well. And he would like to be a fundamental part of making the offense perform well on a, on a weekly basis and he believes he has the skill, ability. He's not there to hang out. He wants to dominate. He wants to be involved so that they don't look terrible on offense. That's basically what he's saying. The the And the, it's real good for fantasy. Yeah, <laughs> the, it really is good for fantasy because this is a true squeaky wheel 
issue, and I love squeaking. This wheel you know ain't what? squeaking, man. <laughs> this yeah. is a 19 target wheel now. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I uh, I know Jason and the Listener League. You acquired Devonte Adams. I did. I went I'm sure as a reaction. It, it was part of it. Yeah. And uh, look, I I have similar offers out where I'm I'm interested in Devonte Adams. Trevor Lawrence questionable. Going to go through the pregame workout tonight. Jamal Williams questionable. Expected to play. First time we're going to see Kamara and Jamal Williams. It will diminish. I mean, like Kamara's been getting so many carries. That's going to come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the the Saints are down three starting offensive linemen. <sighs> That's not good. No, nah. I mean, All I'm, right. I'm still playing Kamara. Don't don't read too much into that. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaacom slash insurance. Fantasy forecast. Well, we've been talking about it all week. Bengals, Cowboys, Jets, Panthers, Texans, Titans, all taking the week off. Little break. Little break ski. Lazy. And um, you need to be prepared for some lower scoring games this week. The implied team totals this week, 21.3 on average. It came from Hayden Winks. The NFL average the last few years has been it's been a lot higher than that. Warren Sharp tweeted this morning, um, fewest touchdowns since 2010, lowest uh, percentage of uh, you know big plays since 2009. Not as entertaining with a lot of large margin victories and a lot of lower over unders this week. But this is, I mean, this is nasty time for the Foot Clan. When things get hard, you are going to be better than your opponent. That's exactly right this, this is the this is the season even though it's like oh it's yuck it's not as fun this is when the foot clan wins you know we're gonna we're gonna help you decide who to who to start and how to dig through trash and find that gold yeah the las vegas raiders are three and three Devontae adams's squad travel to chicago taking on the one and five bears dk sportsbook line las vegas minus three on the road the over under is 37 and a half and that is somehow the second lowest total of the week. And uh, you will have, most likely, Tyson Badgent. Uh, Bilbo Badgent? Yes, Bilbo. Uh, we've when, seen the tweets, when, poor, when, poor fella. When you said Tyson, I was like, Wait, who's this? Yeah, I <laughs> Who know. Who are we talking I about? Know. Uh, he that does, can't be his name. As Kyle has told us, he holds a butt ton of Division Two records. Nice. Ah. And... Um, He'll be the guy, and so he's who you're depending on to provide DJ Moore with fantasy value. So, I look, let's start it off right away. Are you turning back to DJ Moore and the fact that he is the bona fide one here with Bilbo? Um, or do you go to the Christian Kirk, Joshua Palmer area? No, I, I, I'm not going to drop all that way down because of uh, Bilbo. I, 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 What we saw was, I mean, obviously it was a very short period of time, but when Bilbo came in, he was targeting uh, DJ Moore like crazy, so I, I expect DJ Moore will he's have the one target. Yeah, he's he's the he's the target, um, and the matchup. You know, it's not the worst. I would say this: the the Raiders' defense has looked much better the last few weeks than how it opened the season. We need to pay attention to that. Um, I, it, DJ Moore is not like a you got to get him in your lineups, but I would rather play him uh, than the Palmers or. Christian Kirk with Beathard. Craig Reynolds, DJ Moore? Was, uh, we, we didn't mention it, but Craig Reynolds we should have. was banged up in practice. So I, mean, you, I saw two injuries, yeah, too. Yeah, toe and for, for two, Mr. Reynolds? Toe and hamstring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he that was a It was a full did not practice. And Jameer Gibbs was supposed to be back. So, yeah. I mean. <laughs> Craig, I don't think. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, on Tuesday, and this, this happens. You gave this perfect example earlier how last week Mike emptied his fab yep. getting demarcado and by the end of the week when games needed to be played you benched him that was the right decision I mean you you can't just have the sunk cost fall uh, fallacy to well I I picked these guys up Zach Evans and Craig Reynolds right now look like bad starts yeah potentially till we get more information if Reynolds is practicing in full for two days it changes if Evans Certainly. is taking all the first team reps it changes but uh, on that side of the ball, I mean, that's Cole Komet. Uh, you know, we had the uh, down game last week, which is, look, welcome to tight ends that break out. They don't really break out. They just break through for a couple weeks, and I wouldn't trust him. No, it's 
like for Cole Komet, you're looking for touchdowns, and this isn't a, a seasoned veteran coming in here to be our our backup quarterback. So I would try to move away from Komet. Okay, and then we know the running back situation right now. Deonta Foreman last week got work. Darrington Evans got work. Travis Homer's supposed to be back. Travis Homer was on the active roster, which I, is a place that Darrington Evans wasn't and Deonta Foreman wasn't. Yeah, so to me the flow chart would be if Roshan clears concussion protocol, I I want to play him. I know that the, the quarterback situation is not great, but where the running backs or uh, where the Raiders are against running backs schedule adjusted, they're twenty seventh. So I'm gonna take the work and the opportunity and a and a decent matchup that they can get it done. And if Roshan is out, I think that Travis Homer likely just takes what Darrington Evans did last week and then Foreman st stays in what he did last week. So they if if Roshan's active, I like it. If he is out, it's two really high risk plays, uh, leaning that you're just hoping that there's a PI. You you're really hoping Darnell Mooney dry, draws a PI in the end zone and then Foreman falls in. I I you know, it, on a week mean. like this week where you've got a bunch of injuries, a bunch of bye weeks, I think you should probably be starting Roshan if he's active or Deonta Foreman if Roshan is not active. I, okay. I am more pro Deonta Foreman than I think you two gentlemen are. He still had, I know you say it was garbage time, but he still had 15 carries last week. Um, I believe he will get the bulk of the carries in this game, and the Raiders are a good matchup on the ground. Okay, with, with the flow chart. Roshan's out. Tyler Algier against Tampa Bay or Deonta Foreman? Deonta Foreman. The Raiders side of the football, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo didn't practice with the back injury. Do you guys have any other updates on, on Jimmy G's availability? Anything I, you've heard? With the way that they were talking about the injury, I had fully expected him to miss this week. I, 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 I saw something that was positive that made it seem like he was going to. They said it wasn't as bad as it could have been. But that doesn't I – I don't know that that means he plays. Yeah, I think it's still too early to know for sure. I want to let people know Josh Jacobs is number one in the NFL in opportunities per game right now. So Josh Jacobs is getting all of the workload, and that matters. Like, I, I had some people coming after him in my dynasty league, Josh Jacobs, because he's 25, right? He's a pretty attractive dynasty asset. Sure. And, uh, I mean, the opportunities the last four weeks, 22, 28, 25, 30. Efficiency – you know, it hasn't been there for him. I don't care that much. Like, that is so invaluable. Like, you know, offers were made to me with Ramondre. They were made to me with Alvin Kamara and all the work he gets. Like, Jacobs is is beating Kamara in those opportunities and the and the target numbers. So I'm very excited for Jacobs this week. I think it's a good week for him. And then Devontae Adams, you know, dealt with the shoulder injury, had the, the monster game, and then two down weeks, not worried about him, put him back out there. You know, there is the off chance that he would get moved before the trade deadline in two weeks, but because this team is probably going to win this game, they'll be sitting at four and three. I doubt it happens. Jacoby Myers has been uh He's been great. Great. Yeah, he's he's looked great. He's had the targets, he's had the fantasy production. He's been a wide receiver one each of the past two weeks. Yeah, well, currently on the season, he is the wide receiver 14, and he didn't play in week two. Yeah, a, wide, a top 12 wide receiver in three of his five games. And he looks the part. It's not just a coincidence. It's not like the right. old, you know, Renfro just was hyper-targeted a couple years ago, and you just go with it. Like, Myers looks like a go-to receiver. So, um, it, it is really funny that you've got a low over-under, um, you know, a great matchup against the Bears' bad defense, but there's uh, with this low over under and not knowing who the quarterback is, it's like. But yet, I want to play Josh Jacobs yep. and Devonte Adams and Jacoby Myers, and I think that you can be looking towards Michael Mayer. It, the, the, Absolutely, I, Mike. I is, Mike is in on that. I think. I think uh, you, for Nat, the, I think it like could be said, trappy this week. But um, out of out of but pure, I get it. I get the matchup out of pure nastiness. Now, I mean, it, like we are under the impression. I'm under the impression. That if Garoppolo misses, Brian Hoyer would be the starter. Is yes. there is there anything out there that suggests that O'Connell would start? Not to my knowledge. Okay, just that that's something that we do need. It'll be to, Hoyer. We do need to pay attention just just in case something pops up. I don't. I think Aiden O'Connell's fine too against the Bears. Hey, man, he looked rough. So, uh, all right, quick break. Back with another matchup.
The Cleveland Browns are three and two, and the Indianapolis Colts, well, they are three and three. Games in Indianapolis and the DraftKings Sportsbook line. Cleveland, minus 2.5. The over-under is 40. Are we celebrating that? I'm not sure. Yeah, we are. But uh, both teams, you know, in the playoff picture, both teams could potentially have backup quarterbacks. Gardner Minshew uh, has thrown the ball 99 times in the past two weeks. There's a lot of backup quarterbacks right now. Yeah, I you know, it's going to be – P.J. Walker or Deshaun Watson if he can play. And I've I've seen some positivity around Watson being back out there. I would be thrilled as an Amari Cooper manager to have him back. So, uh, you know, last week, every time I looked at the screen, it felt like some targets were heading Elijah Moore's way, but Elijah Moore has not. I mean, the summary of this season is that he has not turned in even a wide receiver three week despite being targeted Sheesh. nine times, nine times. Like, He's finished 43, 67, 49, 118, and 58. So you can just ignore those targets. Yeah. Yeah. So Amari Cooper, we're cool there. Uh, what about Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt this week against the Colts' 24th-ranked running defense? Yeah, the, you can run on the Colts. I think Jerome Ford is a great start, and Kareem Hunt could be. He did miss practice, so we need to pay attention. No. Um, what's What's going on there? Yeah, I, I I don't remember the exact injury. I can Let's look it up look. here, but um, like, like car trouble? <laughs> no, no, he was. He, <laughs> okay. It was an injury. Time zone um, issue. Yeah, it was like he just missed it. He just he overslept practice again. Um, but I believe he uh, he was a uh, non-participant in practice. So we'll see uh, how today goes. I think that's a really important one to monitor with or without Hunt. Even if Hunt is active, I think Jerome Ford is still a good start. He still gets the majority of snaps over Kareem Hunt. He is in the leading role. And while it might be closer to a 50-50 timeshare, it's not just Jerome Ford getting everything. Um, he's looked good, and this is a, a very plus matchup on a week where you need guys like Jerome Ford. All right, the matchups for the uh, running back position are so much better on the Cleveland side with the Indianapolis defense. But you know now we're, we're staring down Jonathan Taylor and Zach Moss in some sort of committee, some sort of timeshare. And the Browns are a tremendous defense. They travel well. They shut down the run. You know, I wouldn't love the matchup if one of those guys was alone, like if Zach Moss had to start by himself. So how are you evaluating Taylor, who had 50% of snaps last week, Moss, who had 42%? Yeah, I mean, I, I believe Taylor has taken over the leading role. Um, but it is not yet a situation where he's 75% where I do think he'll end up. The matchup is brutal. I mean, this is a week where you, you're, you're probably, I mean, you're probably going to start Jonathan Taylor and get not a ton from him, but, but more than the other garbage options out there. The real question is Zach Moss. Can you start someone who is getting less than 50% and could be significantly less. It could be 30%. I, I think he'll it'll, it'll probably get about 40% of the work this week. But is 40% of the work for a backup quarterback against a great Browns defense? It's, it's so ruthless with Zach Moss because he's been a top 10 guy four out of five weeks, and he's been a top 21 guy every week. And he's – I've never wanted to start him. Yeah. <laughs> I've never wanted to. I traded him away last week, and the person started him. And they got uh, they got fifteen they fantasy got, points. They got the touchdown and a bunch of receptions. That's what yeah. it comes down to. Is Gardner likely going to throw the ball a lot? They're not going to have a ton of success on the ground. Jonathan Taylor has not had success on the ground thus far, but six targets this past week. I'm playing Taylor this week, and if I can get out of it, I'm trying not to play Moss. But, it, like, would you play Zach Moss against the Browns or would you go Gus Edwards against the Detroit Lions? Uh, both are bad matchups. Right. Um, I would I would stick with the hotness. you stick with Moss? Yeah. I think I'd go Gus on that one. But just highlighting the point of another guy getting work in a bad matchup. Yeah, so... I'm man. I I think that the the switch is happening this week, and you're you would have like, where Moss Moss had a a touchdown. I'm trying to remember how it happened. It felt it was. I mean, he's he's 
the problem is is that they like he, him and he's performing well on a regular basis. You know, it was seven carries. Seven so, seven he yeah. had more targets than Taylor. I I'm playing Taylor I mean, and I'm trying not to play Moss. You laid it out well. Buff, Buffalo's four and oh Josh Downs. Uh, any interest uh, this week? Yeah. I I mean it's it's a tough They're throwing week. the ball a ton. The matchup stinks, but the the targets are actually funneling to the slot wide receivers against the Cleveland Browns. So in a PPR, I I'm not looking at the Cleveland Browns and Josh Downs and going, I gotta get out of this. Buffalo is four and two. They take on the one and five New England Patriots in New England. Buffalo is nine point road favorites over the Patriots. That gives the Patriots sixteen implied points. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so let's start there. How gross is this going to be for the offense uh, of New England? Um, it's not going to go great. But it, to be <laughs> fair, it hasn't gone great all season. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson, I still think you can start him. Um, he had his bounce back last week, as we had hoped. Uh, the matchup. You remember, the plan was wait until those three terrible matchups were over. Uh, when he had the the Jets, the Cowboys, and the Saints in a row, trade for him, play him. So far, so good. Uh, last week against the Raiders, he put up 15 and a half fantasy points. He got the targets going again. So Ramondre, I'm fine starting again. Buffalo is not. I mean, they're they're a good team. They're a good defense, but they aren't a brutal uh, matchup for running backs. They're middle of the pack. They've given up uh, the 23rd most points to fantasy running backs i'm i'm not scared of this matchup uh for Ramondre. anybody else on the patriots no goodness hopefully not josh allen been a couple of rough weeks is he returned to stallion form this week what do you think uh like, yeah like, I like, think a, so. like a baby stallion? you think so the patriots have been shutting down quarterbacks Seventh, if you adjust for schedule, only 12.4 points to the position. I mean, even two weeks ago against Jacksonville, when their offense really struggled, they had a hard time scoring the whole first half. Josh Allen did nothing. He was still the quarterback, too. He put up 27 fantasy points in four-point The scoring. last five times he's played New England, three touchdowns, two, three, one, four. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, you're not benching Allen. James Cook, I, I tweeted this morning, James Cook is averaging Man. more yards from scrimmage per touch than B. John Robinson. He's number four in the NFL. B. John's at five. And yet, last week, 49% of snaps and zero targets. And the, an entire half of nothingness. One touchdown on the season. Latavius Murray is the pass blocking preference. And so when the pass rush is... is kind of causing problems for Josh Allen. I believe Murray is is getting rotated in to protect him. I don't know what that pass rush is going to look like from New England this week. Divisional matchup. You know, I've I've had thoughts of, you know, teams that have Cook and Murray just playing both because I think you know, you the can. game the game script could end up being out of hand and Damian Harris is not a factor this week. So is that a potential play and just that way you're not mad when you look at the screen? <laughs> You ever think about that? Uh, just, I got that guy. I also have that guy. I just I got all the Bills running backs. I think I would be mad if all I got was the running game from the Bills. The Bills, uh, I mean, the, the if you look at the Patriots right now, they've been giving up uh, schedule adjusted about 15 fantasy points a game, um, you know, uh, two running backs. So it's only it was only 11 fantasy points last week if you combine them. Right, so, so that's I, I not don't good. Think, I don't think you're happy to play both. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna certainly stick with Cook, who has been excellent. The opportunity hasn't been great the last two weeks, but his talent has. Nothing... Throw him the ball. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, that's, that's why you have him here. That's his skill set. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, the thing is, is if you don't like the pass rush. There is the drop it down to your running back strategy as opposed to just blocking with Latavius sure. Murray. Uh, Stephon Diggs, of course, Gabe Davis, he finally Gabe Davis last week, but he had been on a roll. Uh, it's not a great matchup. It's a dart throw this week, just like, I mean, Josh Palmer, Gabe Davis. That is an I mean, interesting that's... question. I, I I would probably go Josh Palmer. Dalton Kincaid should be back. 
which kind of makes both tight ends uh, un- unplayable. Cortland Sutton or Gabe Davis? Oh, man. Gabe Davis. Really? Probably. I, I, if it were me, I would do that because I would want to not have Russ throwing my guy the ball. Oof. You're not going to want to hear starts of the week. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Well, we'll get into that more. Uh, Washington's 3-3. Three and three. The Giants are 1-5. and five. Washington travels to New York. The DraftKings the draft sportsbook line, Washington minus 2.5. Over-under is 39. Immediate thoughts in this matchup. That Sam Howell is still in play as a streaming quarterback. Um, we don't know if it's going to be Daniel Jones yet. He has been he was limited in practice on Wednesday. Taylor Taylor did okay um, in a much more uh, it, a much more difficult matchup the past week for Tyrod Taylor if he is going to go. Washington's defense is on the season hasn't been what they had hoped. We're looking at schedule adjusted 25th against quarterbacks, 31st against wide receivers. So I think that there is there's some action in here even though I think on on the surface when I see Manders versus Giants I'm not overly excited about it especially with the over under but I think that there are there's players here who I think can have be be amongst the top of the fantasy scores this week yeah I I think you're right Brian Robinson projects to be a good play Sam Howell projects to be a good play Um, obviously you've got Saquon who is always going to be started and a guy I know you like, Mike Wandale Robinson. Yep. The, the matchup for wide receivers here is is perfect for the Giants, and I'm not too worried about whether it is Daniel Jones or not. Uh, for a guy like Wandale, whose targets are, um, you know, close to the line of scrimmage, he, he he's a he's a really solid play this week. All right, uh, do you see that? You see Jahan Dotson holding holding the yes. football. Yeah, what was that? He's taking reps as a holder. What are and, we? And you probably are going. What's a what's a holder? Because we don't talk about holders a lot. Um, you know the guy who receives the snap on the kick and then he holds the ball. It's just above kicker. water boy. Right. It is right above water boy. Yeah. So what, what is happening? Is uh is not good. I mean, who who does that at practice? <laughs> Maybe he came up and was like, "How do you do that?" What if he walked out? Because I could see myself being there has curious. To be like, an explanation. What's the what's the strategy there? Yeah, you don't take your first round wide receiver and be like, "Hey, hey, hey at practice today, I want you to go over with those guys and uh, catch that snap." You can see and Jefferson hold that ball. doing that? No, no. So, uh, you know, what else from this matchup is interesting to you, Wandale? Yeah, well, I think Wandale. If you want to get just absolutely as nasty as possible, again the. The transition of the Giants wide receivers. Wandale is the uh, slot wide receiver. Paris Campbell has been uh, relegated to the bench. Slayton had two huge catches this past week, and they were very nice with uh, always, with Tyrod he Taylor. He always looks great on the plays he's involved. He always has. <laughs> yeah, you know, he really. I don't know why he isn't more involved, but this again, the the matchup is really nice. I think that on a crazy bye week. Um, injury riddled situation. I've been looking at waivers where I'm like, man, I've got a really bad double flex. Is there someone on waivers that I could start? And Darius Slayton is someone where he, he's playing 80 plus percent of snaps in a game where um, you, you could easily see him with 80 plus yards and five receptions, having a fine fantasy day. He's sitting out there on 100 percent of waivers. So if you're in a, an emergency situation, yes. he, I you can look his direction. Uh, Washington, 31st against opposing fantasy wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and Logan, I think you can go back to Logan Thomas. I know it was a disaster this past week, but I, I still believe he will be involved. Yeah. I'm still playing him in, in a couple of leagues over, uh, other options. I think if you don't ride the bumps with some of the lower tier tight ends, you get none of the good games. Right. So we'll see if he fits into that category or not. Atlanta's three and three. Tampa Bay is three and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Tampa Bay minus two and a half. The over unders. There it is. Thirty seven. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay. It was, okay. It was a really disappointing okay. offensive performance for Tampa Bay last week. Uh it was a tough matchup. Detroit's defense is exceptional. 
and Baker just didn't get it going. 51% of passes completed, some bat downs at the line of scrimmage, some interceptions off of those. So on the Tampa side, let's talk about it. Baker trying to get the ball to Evans and Godwin. Uh, Godwin, for what it's worth, has, has just been a Falcon killer in his career, averaging six receptions, 93 yards against Atlanta since 2018. He also hunts Falcons. Uh, wow. Yeah. Just to, eat, to eat them. He, yeah. What? Yeah. He doesn't waste any of it. He uses the feathers, everything. <laughs> well, I mean, it's got to be environmental. Exactly. Is that a right. hat? You make a hat out of those? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the most you can make, right? Uh, I mean, if you get you enough need, of them. A you pillow? probably need enough. A pillow? A pillow? <laughs> yeah. yeah. A falcon feather pillow? Yeah. I mean, you put, oh, you're telling me you can't go to go to like a farmer's market and you sell it. I'm selling a falcon. It is unlawful pillow. for any person to trap, take, transport, or possess. Yeah. Oh, look, we don't support raptors it. for do falconry not, purposes. I do not condone. We don't support it. This behavior. We're just saying, Chris Godwin. That's from the falconry right. guide and permits. <laughs> uh, would you be surprised to know that nobody in the entire NFL is catching a higher percentage of their targets than Rashad White at the running back position? He is the number one in the NFL. Saw that this morning. Is that? And it is a stats that don't matter. It's a fairly large uh, amount of targets. I mean, he we, we knew he was capable at catching the ball. It's not turning into yards. Yeah, what he does with his receptions is impressively bad. 16 of 17, <laughs> 98 total yards on those. So yards per catch of 5, 6, 8, 7, 4. Uh, that's 6 on the season. Rashad White is, uh, what is he for fantasy? He is a, a bust. He is <laughs> sorry. He is a a startable fringe running back too. He has been red light, green light the entire season. If you want to buy into those trends, it is a green light week. I have uh you know, when I was looking at the work that Keyshawn Vaughn got last week, I wanted to like talk about him on waivers and then I saw oh. I saw he averaged one and a half a carry. Yeah, he's no, no. He's just he is What happened to Sean Tucker, Mike? They uh, he probably was on a hunt with Chris Godwin, and he took the fall. <laughs> so the team is mad at him. Mike Evans, you play him. Godwin, you play him. And there you go. Desmond yep. Ritter on the other side. Bijan, Algier, Drake Lennon, Kyle Pitts. Um, John U. Smith. Got to say the name now. You do yeah. have to say the name. I mean, it, it is feels like a coin flip when you throw those both out there, which guy's going to end up at the top. But, hey, let's go. Let's give him credit while we can. Kyle Pitts, the number nine and number three tight end over the last two weeks. Back into the end zone. Is that heating up? Yeah, that's heating uh, up. For him? Uh, oh, not yeah, no, 93. That, I mean, he was, uh, <laughs> yes, he is heating up. It is. <laughs> rules are rules, Andy. It is double digit fantasy it's, points at the tight end position. It's a technicality. Back he had 43 weeks. yards. And a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, don't yeah. leave that part okay. out. All right. He is he is technically heating up. I don't really want to play him in this matchup, but I you could certainly do worse. Would this you week. play Logan Thomas over Pitts and Johnny? No. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that either. No, I think I'd go with Pitts. And, uh, you know, Johnny Smith, third most routes run on the Falcons this year. Drake London? Mike, he was your hungry for more. He has been uh, very good in terms of targets. He is a go-to receiver. Yeah, he is a go-to receiver. And, the and they are not favored. The, the the matchup, the Bucks shut everything down except for fantasy wide receivers. So he is he's the one I have the most confidence in of the Falcons. B. John Robinson's fantasy finishes this year. Give me a lay of the land. 8, 8, 25, 10, 21, and 20 the last two weeks. Opportunities per game. Been pretty good. Yeah. 18 and a half. They need to go north. They really need to go north. I mean, this team needs to keep Bijan like on the field um, far more. Uh, Tyler Algier has not looked good. I mean, he is getting a lot of work and doing very little with it. And it just seems like when I'm watching the Falcons play, if I was a Falcons fan, and I had nothing to do with fantasy football, nothing to do with I, I want more points for Bijan Robinson – I'm, I would just be frustrated every time it feels like you're having success and moving the ball with Bijan, and then it's like, well, you want to you wanna be uh, second and long? Let's, let's put Algier in and give him the first down carry and just, like, wipe a drive away. You're, you're, it, it really is frustrating, and, and hearing Arthur Smith talk about 
saving Bijan and taking the long-term approach and making sure that he's good for the whole season, it's like Make you're sure going to lose your season if you don't put your players out there to win games. Like, so what if he's there, you know, in week 17 when you're playing for nothing? It's just frustrating to me when, when you see – a talent gap so clear, so evident, where one thing is helping your team, one thing is hurting your team, and it's not like Bijan is too tired in that moment. It's just – Oh, he, I, I'm sure he wants to play. He yeah, wants to be oh, out for there. sure. It's like just do what's better for your team. You want the Saquon treatment. Yes, I want the Christian McCaffrey treatment. The the All the all the running backs that are the as good as Bijan, where the gap for your actual team is like you're hurting your – Ability to win when you take them off the field. Stop taking them off the field, man. It touchdowns are what it's destroying Bijan. Uh, he has uh, am I looking at this zero rushing touchdowns on the year. He has that little behind the back he has, uh, shuffle pass. He has two receiving touchdowns on the year. He has uh, one carry back from week two. One carry inside the five and and, and, and last year Algier or last week Algier had, Algier one, had, had one. one yeah that's not Algier's not dominating that he had one last week but hadn't seen one since week one that goes to the bigger they're just, problem they're not getting inside the five and running the ball apparently that's that's it they're not getting inside the five or the 10 or the 20 you want to know why because they <laughs> just, keep handing the ball to Tyler Algier and killing drives stop it all right, couple of uh, seventeen uh, carries two weeks ago, thirteen carries this last week. Stop doing that. And I told you, yards from scrimmage per touch is at number five in the league. Deshaun Watson will practice on Thursday. First full practice potential since the twenty second right. of September. I, I'm dro I'm dropping Tyler Algier. He's out, out of a, a out of a, an spite? absolute. I'm gonna I'm gonna offer him. I'm tra I'm getting him off my roster. He's he's the you think someone's like, trading for just, Tyler just Algier? A, wait, is this just like a handoff trade? Yeah, I'm just anyone want him. I mean, if you're just handing them off, sure. Yeah, I might. I'm very mad at Algier. I didn't realize that until this game breakdown. Like I'm, <laughs> you're you're mad at Arthur Smith. No, 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 no. Yeah. I, well, okay, yeah. If both, Tyler, both. If, if Tyler, or Algier you don't want was, Algier to be great. If Algier were on a different team, no, we would like Tyler Algier. I, it's frustrating me to watch him kill drives. You, you also have a turd on your roster for weeks. Yeah, and, I, and I've got to, I've got to end that. Um, is this a, like a Zach Moss situation? Yeah, or? maybe I'll uh, trade. You him want to trade him for go, Moss? Yeah, yeah, I'll trade him for Moss. Yeah, I don't have him anymore. All right, Trevor Lawrence improvement with the knee sprain expected to start tonight. Jason. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. All right, let's do it. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. All right, let's kick it off. I I'm going to be honest. I I genuinely, honestly, don't like any quarterback starts of the week that aren't obvious this week. Right. They, we have our we had our streamers. I mean, like Brock Purdy was my streamer, and he is fine for this category, but. I, you know, we try not, we're not going to give you layups. It's not going to be Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Lamar Jackson for our starts of the week. So trying to find another name with a matchup, with an opportunity, I reluctantly selected Jordan Love. <laughs> Jordan Love is the start of the week this week because, you know, he's been a top 12 quarterback in three of five weeks. He plays Denver. He has averaged, you know, the eighth most fantasy points among quarterbacks per game just barely behind Lamar Jackson. He gets back a true first down, move the sticks, passing game weapon in Aaron Jones, and we know how bad the Broncos' defense has been. So when I look at those kind of peripheral options, Jordan Love stuck out to me as one that you could get into your lineup this week. If you have a bye week, if you need to turn back to somebody that has, has produced, that's that's my guy. Uh, I'm going to go with my stream of the week, Geno Smith. If you picked him up, I think he's a capable starter. He's got more than a touchdown favorite uh, line at home, third highest team implied total. Uh, the Cardinals rank 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points given up to quarterbacks. Might be 32nd if uh, people weren't dropping touchdowns against them last week. Uh, so, I, you know, if you've got Geno Smith, and you've got bye weeks, uh, he's, he projects to be a good start this week. 
Steel underpants. Here we go, baby. Russell Wilson against the Green Bay Packers. Steel underpants. It sounds nasty. Russell Wilson is a top 12 quarterback on the season right now. The Broncos are 1-5. and five. It is not all Russ's ma uh, fault. The matchup is one that we can uh, attack against the Green Bay Packers. It is one of three games currently with a total of 45 or above. And then diving deeper into the metrics, this one, shout out to Kyle. Russ ranks number one among all quarterbacks in fantasy points per dropback against zone coverage. The Packers run zone, at least they have, 80% of the time. This is a matchup that I think that Russ finishes the week as a top 10 quarterback. And if you have the intestinal fortitude and the underpants, makes, and the underpants to protect yourself, it makes sense. Well, I'm going to double down real quick here with the Packers and that Denver matchup, which is all we've talked about so far on uh, the majority of the starts of the week. But I think people need to hear it. Aaron Jones is going to be back, and he needs to be in your lineup. I, I truly believe that. I think, you know, it has not been a fun ride dealing with the hamstring, the re-aggravation, the lack of um, opportunity, and this is a terrible, terrible Bronco defense that has been especially bad to running backs. I think we have all watched the Green Bay Packers and said to ourselves every play, oh, my gosh, they need Aaron Jones so bad. Yeah. And he's going to be back out there. He is he is uh, ready to contribute. They give up 172 yards a game to running backs, and I think you have to you have to jam him back into your lineup this week. Uh, for me, my running back start of the week is Jerome Ford. We Ford talked about tough. it for <laughs> Bill Ford tough. Um, Jerome Ford has has been pretty good. Like you know, he's been a top 24 running back three of his five uh, weeks. Obviously. The first week didn't even really count with uh, Nick Chubb there. And he's he's averaging 14.5 fantasy points per game. The the Colts, they're 23rd in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to running backs. This is the type of player that I think is just a really solid play. He's going to get enough carries to have you know opportunity you can rely on. They're favored. They should score a rushing touchdown. And you've got the current thigh injury to Kareem Hunt. So Jerome Ford, he's wheels up for me. Isaiah Pacheco, back-to-back -back weeks for me, but he's taken on the Chargers. He's been top 15 four straight weeks, averaging 20 opportunities per game. That's, that's, that's wild. That's the thing is Pacheco has gone from That's a, more than Bijan. It, it gone from a guy of like, yeah, he's on a great offense. He's their starting running back, and he gets me points sometimes too. He is being featured in this offense and – the bonus over the past three years, the Chiefs Chargers games have averaged 54 points. So I don't know that they're going to make it there this week, but they've been giving us greatness over the past three years. All right. Well, less hesitancy here. This is my favorite start of the week. Uh, my wide receiver, who would have been Jason's had I not hustled and grabbed him sooner, it's Hollywood Brown. Oh. It makes sense. 11 delicious targets last week, but you didn't get the outcome that you wanted, making him a buy now candidate. I mean, it, you can buy him on the cheap. Mm -hmm. You're going to get Kyler back soon, but I like him this week against Seattle. Uh, this is a player that's in the top 10 in the NFL in total targets. Last week, and Kyle, uh, you're going to have to look that number up for me, but it was like 135 air yards last oh, yeah. week, and he only ended up with like Forty. It was two total yards. The ratio was not where we wanted. And the, uh, if you remember the game, I mean, he had a couple of bomb touchdowns where it was like the fingertips of a St. Louis Ram defender prevented it from happening. He's been targeted on twenty six percent of his routes. That's slightly behind Keenan. And Seattle is giving up. Oh my gosh, it was one hundred and ninety <laughs> air yards. One hundred and ninety, and he ended up with thirty four actual yards. Play him this week against Seattle. I really like them in this matchup. They're going to have to throw the football, and Seattle stinks against wide receivers. Uh, my wide receiver start of the week is Puka Nakua. You, you cannot be afraid of what happened last week. You say, oh, no, you, Cooper Cup is back, and he's the main guy. You, can, you should I not. I can't. You should not I'm a be little afraid. afraid. I know that there are people afraid. There's You're people afraid. like me. Yeah, uh, but here's the thing. Last week, you you didn't have to throw a ton to destroy the Cardinals in the second half. They just ran it down their throat. Even still, Puka had 33% of the targets. 
It, it just weren't a ton of targets. He also was one of the aforementioned dropped touchdown passes. If he catches that touchdown pass, he has a fine game, and no one is afraid at all. The the metrics of him being out on the field, of running routes, of getting targets, they're all still just as good. Not every wide receiver scores a bunch every single week. It, it's the combination of the fact that Cup is back and he had a down game while Cup had a good game that has everybody afraid. Do not be afraid. Uh, th this is a, a very, very good matchup. The Steelers rank uh, dead last in schedule-adjusted fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. He's on the field. He's getting targets. He's a great play. Don't don't be afraid of it. Uh, Puka's gonna uh, Puka's gonna dominate this week. I'm going with Wandale Robinson of the New York Giants taking on the Washington Manders since returning from injury. Five targets, six, six, and then eight this past week with Tyrod Taylor been targeted on nearly 26 percent of his routes this season that is a top 12 number at the wide receiver position he is their guy Paris Campbell started as the guy as the slot player for the Giants zero routes this past week plus the matchup commanders have allowed the fourth most passing yards and they are 31st in schedule adjusted points I think that Wandale no matter if it's Daniel Jones or Taylor as the quarterback I think that he's in play this week all right, I'm going to go with Dallas Goddard in the Miami game that I'm actually super excited about. 52 and a half points. Goddard, you know, this is a player that slow start is going to be important for the Eagles the rest of the way. And that week one impact, Mike talked about it yesterday. He goosed. He made you think that you had wasted everything. I don't think so. Miami's a, a pretty bad defense against opposing tight ends. We talked about the Devontae Smith injury. Trust in Goddard. Trust in Goddard. I like it. Uh, my tight end start of the week is getting loose. Oh, Pat oh no, Friar Muth. Really, Pat this Friar is, Muth. I is, thought about does he it. need some underpants? Because no, no, no. He's a I, good start. I thought about it, but I was too wait. Scared. You made a pivot. I, I did too, make a pivot. I was I mean, too scared because of the first game off the injury he the, he he uh let me just throw this yeah, out there yeah, before because yeah. i want i want to set the table of the fear before you you sure. fill it out i saw him hit some waiver wires this week i he's on waiver wires in some leagues and then i was like oh, that's insane based on what i know of him then i <laughs> then i went and looked at three of his four games one for three one for two three for seven mm -hmm. yeah a combined 12 yards in three games so now you may proceed so tell me why and this is time. Remember, like it took him to week three to get to two hands. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And what happened in week three? He had forty-one yards, a touchdown, a very good game. Um, I believe he was your start of the week that that week and was Possibly, uh, yeah, was a good start. Uh, one of those games with only seven yards was where he got injured uh, right before this last. Uh, that was the last time we saw him, and he got take, hurt week one. Take too. that one out. You know, when he plays fifty percent of the snaps and doesn't finish the game. Okay, it's not a great start. Otherwise, he's talented. But more important is the confidence coming back off the injury. He came right out of the bye week. Keep keep in mind it was he missed the game and then got an extra week off with the bye. When they came out of the bye week, immediately to practicing in full. This isn't a ramp him back up. He's fine. Um this is basically like almost because of the bye week it's like the second, you know, it's like, oh, we did we don't have to wait on this injury. Um, the matchup is outstanding. I was doing a ton of nerdy spreadsheet work this week, and one of the things that really stood out to me was over the last five weeks when you adjust for schedule, the biggest gap of any position at you know it, it, for any team was how bad the Rams have been at guarding the tight end position. So I think he's healthy. He was on waiver wires, and I had um, uh, Luke Musgrave as my start of the week originally because Vance Joseph uh, defenses can't guard tight ends. It's another great matchup. Um, this is push comes to shove. I had both players on my roster in League of Record, and I dropped Luke Musgrave this morning because I pick, was able to pick up Pat Fryermuth, and I'm starting him over Musgrave. So I I am with the people who will be starting him I think it's going to be a really good game this week. And my tight end start of the week, it is not for the faint. It is rookie Michael Mayer against the Chicago Bears. The work-in has been slow for the highly drafted rookie, but look at the snaps, 47%, 51%, 66%, up to 81% last week. 
We like that rise. And he was the tight end five, six targets, five for 75. The Bears have allowed top 12 tight end performance in four of six weeks. I think the matchup is there. I think they're figuring out how to get Mayer involved. And again, not it's this is not a play for everybody, but I do think that he is a top 10 play this week. All right. There it is, your starts of the week. Thanks again to our sponsor, Purina, Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high-performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts here. And one more very important segment. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on Boom Boom, I missed it. And Mike led a kicker mutiny? An uprising? I returned home with glee. Unbeknownst, the trap was set for me. There laid a delicious baked potato skin. It turned me red like Mark McGuire, bowels burned like hellfire, tricked by the Packers' Anders Carlson. Mike, any thoughts? There's a lot. I mean, I mean, if you if you were hosting a podcast reflecting on that episode, would the potato skin be at the top of that? Talking point list? No, no. Actually, the, the Mark McGuire is at the top of that. <laughs> turn red. That's just what a reference to the team he played on. Oh no, he was he was a red. He was a red. He was a uh, was real he Bruce Ari- Arians. He had Bruce Arians face. Yeah, yeah. he had absolute Bruce Arians really? face for sure. Which would have potentially been a football reference you could have gone with. Could have, could have, but I chose not to. <laughs> Good work. Yeah, you went baseball. Um, all right, that is it. More matchups tomorrow. The fantasy face-off where Jason will spin a wheel oh, yeah. tomorrow uh, morning. So don't miss it. Make sure you leave us a five-star review if you are so kind on Apple. Uh, or if you listen on Spotify, make sure you follow over there. You can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe, click the bell, catch Mike on Sunday live. And a reminder, one final reminder, dfspass.com. Pick it up for a 33% discount. If you play DFS, you want the lineup optimizer, go check it out. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for joining us, and um, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.